Hello my shimmering stars today I Shora Grover welcome you all to this amazing platform of PW English students today we are going to discuss with the chapter surface chemistry in our batch neat selection express I hope so you have seen the previous lectures and you have completed the previous year questions and the most expected questions with regard to the previous sessions right so today in this particular session we are going to cover the previous year questions and the most expected questions with regard to your chapter surface chemistry i know students you all are preparing for your examinations and you are totally determined for that now there are few lines for you before on going to the very first question of ours kindly listen to me very carefully if you think you are beaten you are if you think you are beaten you are if you think you dare not you don't if you think you dare not you don't if you like to win but you think you can't if you like to win but you think you can't it's almost certain you won't it's almost certain you won't if you think you lose if you think you lose you are lost you are lost for out in the world we find for out in the world we find success begins with the fellow's will it's all in the state of mind it's all in the state of mind if you think you are outclassed if you think you are outclassed you are you have gotten to think high to rise you have gotten to think high to rise you have gotten to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize before you can ever win a prize life's battle don't always go to the stronger or faster man to the stronger or faster man but soon or later the man who wins but soon or later the man who wins is the man who think he can is the man who think he can so always remember the one who is going to think that he wants to do something in life or he thinks he can is the only one who will okay so trust in yourself believe in yourself have self confidence and just just do hard work hard work plus smart work and success will be yours yes students so with this quote we shall start our today's segment with a beautiful smile yes my dear students ma'am how we are going to proceed in this session so as you all know in the previous session also i have given you 2 to 3 minutes in order to solve a particular question i used to say you that kindly pause the video see the question try by your own then match your answer with mine we are going to do the same we are going to do the same yes, so yes students you all guys are, uh, you know ready for this okay so let us start ma'am what is our today's target so have, as i have already told you we are going to do previous year questions and the most important ones so the very first question is in front of you i am going to give you 2 minutes to solve this question though this question will hardly take you know uh, 30 seconds because it is very simple question let me read it for you people the correct option representing a friendly Which adsorption isotherm is A option x by m is equals to kp raised to the power zero point three. B option x by m is equals to kp raised to the power two point five. C option x by m is equals to kp raised to the power minus zero point five. D option x by m is equivalent to kp raised to the power minus one. I am giving you two minutes to solve this particular question. Then I am going to match your answer with mine, students. Yes, everybody. Yes, everybody. Okay. Now see, friendlich adsorption isotherm. I always say kindly pause the video and then you can solve it because we want to save our times. Okay. Though I'll give you thirty seconds over here. Okay. And then we'll proceed to the answer. Okay. Yes, everybody. be fast it's a very simple question very very simple question if you remember what is the equation for friendlich adsorption isotherm see friendlich adsorption isotherm and langmuir one both are important if you are going to study for surface chemistry okay do revise both of them the graphs related to both of them they are really very important right so do that okay now coming back to friendlich adsorption isotherm students it is basically x by m is equivalent to kp raised to the power 1 by n basically this is our this is our equation for friendlich adsorption isotherm 
right this is our equation for friendlich adsorption isotherm where where your 1 by n value will lie between 0 to 1 it will lie between 0 to 1 where your 1 by n value will lie between this right okay now see see over here here they have given kp raised to the power 0 0.3 if i talk about very first option a option 1 by n value is 0 0.3 if i talk about b option over here 1 by n value ma'am is 2.5 if I talk about C option over here, 1 by N value is minus 0 0.5. If I talk about D option over here, it is 1 by N is equivalent to minus 1. Yes, everybody. Yes, everybody. So, we have to see the range between 0 and 1. So, if I look up to all of these over here, this is more than 1. This is less than 0 and this is also you know uh, coming backwards that be less than 0 only 0 0.3 is the range that lies between 0 and 1 that means option number a students option number a will be your correct answer answer comes out to be your option number a for this particular question clear everybody i guess this is clear to everyone kindly write it down students kindly write it down everybody okay shall we move on to the next question of ours if it is done if it is done if it is written kindly take a screenshot so that we can proceed to the next question now comes the second question let us read the question which one of the following characteristics is associated with adsorption which one of the following is associated with adsorption let me read the options for you a option is delta g and delta h are negative but delta s is positive b option is delta g and delta s are negative but delta h is positive c option is delta g is negative but delta h and delta s are positive while d option is delta g delta h and delta s all are negative so what do you think what do you think I want you all to kindly tell me the formula with regard to the Gibbs free energy. What is the formula with regard to delta G my dear students? First of all, tell me that and then we are going to understand about adsorption and solve this particular question. So see basically ma'am delta G is sorry. Delta G is equivalent to delta H minus T delta S. Ma'am this is our formula. Do you remember students? This is the formula. Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am now see over here over here uh, when we talk about which process when we talk about adsorption if you know students adsorption is your surface phenomena what is adsorption ma'am adsorption is your surface phenomena it is your surface phenomena and when i'm talking about surface phenomena i am referring to here as the interaction between the adsorbent and the adsorbate it is the interaction between adsorbent and adsorbate that takes place over here now listen to me very very carefully when i am talking about adsorption that means the molecules are now getting adsorbed at the surface that means their randomness will decrease why because they are settling at a particular place making interactions so uh, if i talk about adsorption if i talk about ma'am adsorption in adsorption ma'am randomness will decrease randomness will decrease now if randomness decreases randomness refers to as delta s it will decrease hence it will become a negative value what it will become ma'am a negative value now just see over here now just understand over here if delta s becomes a negative value if this becomes your a negative value negative into negative will become something positive negative negative will become something positive yes students now for a reaction to occur for a reaction to occur delta g should be what for a reaction to occur for uh, for adsorption to occur you can write over here for adsorption to occur for adsorption to occur delta g should be negative now just understand this should all also be negative now if we are saying this is a negative value negative into negative becomes something positive now you when you are adding something the answer should be positive but answer is coming negative that means that means this value negative into negative become positive that means this complete value if i talk over here this complete value ma'am will be lower than delta h might be it is lower then only it becomes negative see if delta h is negative 
and this whole term is positive the negative plus positive if negative is higher in number then automatically the sum will be negative so that means ma'am delta h will also be negative what will be delta h it will also be negative that means ma'am delta s is negative delta g is negative delta h is negative all of the three terms are negative delta h delta s delta g randomness decreases okay itself delta g Gibbs free energy decreases if adsorption has to occur and delta H will automatically decrease. So all of these are negative. Hence option number D that delta G, delta H and delta S all are negative is the right answer. So we can say that ma'am option number D is going to be the correct answer for this particular question. Clear everybody? Shall we move on to the next question if it is done? Everyone shall we move on to the next question? Kindly take a screenshot for this one. Now comes the next question next question is in friend lich adsorption isotherm the value of 1 by n is a option between 0 and 1 in all cases b option between 2 and 4 in all the cases c option 1 in the case of physical adsorption while d is 1 in the case of chemies option now let us talk over here if i talk of friend lich adsorption isotherm i'm talking about whom ma'am i'm talking about friend lich adsorption isotherm and whensoever i talk about friend lich adsorption isotherm then you should remember now only i have told you x by m is equivalent to kp raised to the power 1 by m x by m is equivalent to kp raised to the power 1 by n yes everybody yes everybody so this is the equation for friendly adsorption isotherm where 1 by n value will lie in between will lie in between 0 to 1 in all the cases where n by n value will lie between 0 to 1 this we have already done the previous question so over here if I see in all of these between 0 and 1 in all the cases option number A is going to be your correct answer option number A is going to be your correct answer yes my dear students okay now let us see the next question of ours I guess everybody has taken the screenshot or everybody has written this one. Now these are previous year and the most expected one. So don't skip any of the question again and again I am repeating. Don't skip any of the question. Now let us see the next question of ours. The Lang Langmuir adsorption isotherm is deduced using the assumption. The Langmuir adsorption isotherm is deduced using the assumption A option. The adsorption sites are equivalent in their ability to absorb, adsorb, sorry, the particles. B. The heat of adsorption varies with coverage. C. Option. The adsorbed molecules interact with each other. While D. Option. The adsorption takes place in multi layers. Now you have to tell uh, through which we acquire Langmuir adsorption isotherm. Yes, everyone giving you again two minutes to think about it as i've told you friend lich and land may both are important so you don't have to skip it you have to do it see so many questions just right now you have seen you have observed with regard to friend lich and uh, landmere right now see students let us talk about it see landmere exorption isotherm is deduced using the assumption that adsorption that is the interaction of adsorbate and adsorbent okay their sites are equivalent in their ability to adsorb the particles so it is based upon this assumption so option number a is going to be our correct answer for this particular question see such a theoretical question but yes you should know about it right now moving on to the next question of ours a plot of log x by m versus log p for the adsorption of a gas on a solid gives a straight line with slope equal to again repeating the question for you all question is a plot of log x by m versus log p for the adsorption of a gas on a solid gives a straight line with slope equal to a option log k b option minus log k c option n d option 1 by n now students students now only we have done this one ma'am x by m is equivalent to k p raised to the power 1 by n so when we are doing logarithm, it becomes log x by m is equivalent to log, now it is kp raised to the power 1 by m. Right, so you are doing its logarithm. Now what will happen? Log x by m is equivalent when something is in multiplication, it will do addition. That is log k plus log. Now see 1 by n will come in front, 1 by n log p. 
this is going to be our equation in terms of logarithm this is going to be our equation in terms of logarithm right now see over here if i see over here this is your y is equivalent to mx plus c this is your graph that we are going to obtain y is equivalent to y is equivalent to mx plus c right now see at y axis you are going to take log x y m at x axis what you are going to take this is your going to be x axis so at x axis you are going to take log p at x axis you are going to take log p at y axis you are going to take log x by m now c is basically the intercept the point at which it will cut on the y axis so it is basically log k that means on the y axis it is going to cut over here that means this whole value is log k this whole value is log k hence what is value of m m is slope what is value of m m is 1 by n and it is positive so this is your slope this is your slope which is 1 by n which is m so slope comes out to be 1 by n slope comes out to be what ma'am slope comes out to be 1 by n m value is referred to as your slope which is equivalent to 1 by n so if i see options over here option number d students is going to be my correct answer for this particular question option number d will be my correct answer for this particular question kindly write it down fast kindly write it down see plot of log x by m versus log p for the adsorption of a gas on a solid gives a straight line so what is the slope slope is 1 by n clear everyone this is according to friendlich adsorption isotherm kindly write it down so that we can move on to the next question <coughs> Now comes your next question, which is not correct regarding the adsorption of a gas on the surface of a solid, which is not correct, they are asking which is not correct, regarding the adsorption of a gas on the surface of solid, A, on increasing temperature, adsorption increases continuously, B, enthalpy and entropy change is negative, C, adsorption is more for some specific substance, D adsorption it is a reversible reaction they are asking which of the following is not the correct statement so see on increasing temperature adsorption increases continuously no why no see what happens basically when whensoever adsorption occurs let us consider this is your adsorbent and adsorbate molecules basically they do interaction like this these molecules will come and do interaction like this okay these are your adsorbate molecules now let us consider that if you are increasing the temperature the molecules which are showing interaction will move far away if they are moving far away how will adsorption increase adsorption will decrease because see what molecules are showing interaction for example these are the molecules showing interaction as soon as you increase the temperature molecules will move away adsorption will not occur so adsorption will decrease on increasing temperature it won't increase continuously it will hence decrease so this is incorrect statement though we have got our answer but yes we can look up to the next options more options over here also enthalpy and entropy changes negative just now we have seen that enthalpy is delta h which came out to be negative and entropy delta s is also negative why because randomness will decrease when you are doing adsorption the molecules will get stick onto the surface of the uh, adsorbent and hence they won't move here and there so we can say randomness also decreases so delta s decreases delta s is negative delta g is negative delta h is negative so randomness ma'am basically decreases hence this is the correct statement adsorption is more for a specific substance yes it is and it is a reversible reaction yes you as you've seen desorption when they are doing interaction it is adsorption when they are removing the molecules that is these options so yes it is a reversible process so option number a students over here is going to be your correct answer for this particular question great everybody let us see the next question of ours now the next question is the incorrect statement regarding enzymes is the incorrect statement regarding enzyme is a enzymes are bio catalyst b like chemical catalyst enzyme reduce the activation energy of bio processes c enzymes are polysaccharides d enzymes are very specific for a particular reaction and substrate now this is based upon enzyme uh, and you have to tell which of the following is going to be the correct answer 
Yes, everybody. What are the following? Enzymes are biocatalyst. Yes, ma'am. This is a correct statement. Like chemical catalyst, enzymes reduce the activation energy of bioprocesses. Yes, it is also correct. Enzymes are polysaccharides. No, no, ma'am. They are not polysaccharides. Enzymes are basically protein molecules. So this is the incorrect statement. Hence, option number C we have got as our right answer. Though we can see D option also. Enzymes are very specific for a particular reaction in substrate. Yes, ma'am, they are. So which of the following is the incorrect statement, ma'am? Option number C is the incorrect statement. Kindly write it down, students, so that we can see our next question if it is done. Kindly write it down. <coughs> Okay, now let us see the next question of ours. The next question is, which one of the following statement is not correct? Which one of the following statement is not correct? A option, the value of equilibrium constant. A option is the value of equilibrium constant is changed in the presence of catalyst in the reaction at equilibrium. B, enzyme catalyst is mainly biochemical reaction. C, coenzymes increases the catalytic activity of enzyme. D, catalyst does not initiate any reaction. So you have been given two minutes. Think about it. What shall be the you know incorrect statement over here? <clears throat> what shall be the incorrect statement? Yes, everyone. What shall be the incorrect statement? Anybody? What do you think? What is going to be the incorrect statement? Let us read one by one. The value of equilibrium constant is changed in the presence of a catalyst in the reaction at equilibrium. See. Equilibrium is written. So how value will change? Value is not changed. Is not changed. Why? Because uh, a catalyst is generally used, uh, you know, uh, for a reaction to get completed at a faster rate. Moreover, when we use a catalyst at that spot of time at equilibrium, rate of forward reaction is equivalent to the rate of backward reaction. So it is not changed. So this is our incorrect statement. Hence, we have got our option number A as the right answer. If I talk about B, C, and D options, they all are correct. That yes, enzyme catalyzes mainly biochemical reaction then coenzyme basically increases the catalytic activity of enzyme and yes catalysts do not initiate any reaction they just participate in the reaction so that the reaction can occur fastly so which of the following option is going to be the correct answer ma'am option number a is going to be our correct answer for this particular question let us see the next question of ours the next question is which one of the following statement is incorrect about enzyme catalysis you have to tell which of the following is the incorrect statement about enzyme catalyst is a option enzymes are mostly proteinaceous in nature now this we have just done in the previous question only they are proteins they are not polysaccharides we have done the, so it is correct statement ma'am next one enzyme action is specific yes enzymes are denatured uh, uh, natured by ultraviolet rays and at high temperature enzymes are least reactive at optimum temperature now giving you two minutes see very simple question if you know what is optimum temperature if you know what is optimum temperature it is very very simple question <coughs> See, when you're going to increase the temperature, enzyme cat enzyme activity increases, okay? Now, uh, enzyme activity become maximum at a certain temperature and that temperature is optimum. So, over here, they're saying they're least reactive at optimum temperature. So, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. So, option number D, we have got as our correct answer over here. Option number D, we have got as our correct answer over here. Clear, everybody? Clear? That's great. Let us see the next question. According to the adsorption theory of catalysis, the speed of the reaction increases because... Now, reading the question again. Think about it. According to the adsorption theory, okay... Uh, of catalysis, the speed of the reaction increases because A, the concentration of reactant molecules at the active centers of the catalyst becomes high due to adsorption. B, in the process of adsorption, the activation energy of the molecule becomes large. C, adsorption produces heat which increases the speed of reaction, while D, adsorption lowers the activation energy of the reactants. So, I am giving you again two minutes. It is a simple question but yet a theoretical one. Right? <coughs> Think about it. Adsorption theory of catalysis. The speed of reaction increases because, because, because. Yes, everybody. What will happen over here, ma'am? See, adsorption is basically an exothermic process, ma'am. 
एंड इफ इट इज एन एक्सोथर्मिक प्रोसेस स्टूडेंट्स देन इट्स ऑप्शन इट विल लोअर द एक्टिवेशन ऑफ एनर्जी वेन इट विल लोअर द एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी एनर्जी स्पीड विल ऑटोमेटिकली इंक्रीज सो ऑप्शन नंबर डी इज योर करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन लेट अस सी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अ कोलॉइडल सिस्टम अ कोलॉइडल सिस्टम हैज पार्टिकल्स ऑफ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग साइज अ कोलॉइडल सिस्टम हैज अ पार्टिकल ऑफ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग साइज ए टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस नाइन मीटर टू टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस ट्वेल्व मीटर बी टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस सिक्स मीटर टू टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस नाइन मीटर सी टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस फोर मीटर टू टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस टेन मीटर डी टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस फाइव मीटर टू टेन रेस टू दावर माइनस सेवन मीटर सो लेट मी टेल यू स्टूडेंट्स आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी ऑप्शन नंबर बी that is 10 raised to the power minus 6 meter to 10 raised to the power minus 9 meter clear everybody kindly write it down kindly write it down this is the range <coughs> yes everyone now comes your next question let us read the question question is given below are the two statements statement one is in the coagulation of a negative sol okay in a coagulation of a negative sol the coagulating power of the three given ions is in the order al plus 3 has a power more than ba plus 2 then na positive then statement 2 is saying in the coagulation of a positive sol the coagulating power of the three given sols are nacl has more than na2o4 then na3po4 uh, okay here na2so4 will come now in the light of the above statement choose the most appropriate answer from the options given below okay a option given to you is both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct b option both statement 1 and statement 2 are incorrect c option statement 1 is correct and but statement 2 is incorrect d option statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct one so see over here uh, see in the coagulation of a negative sol you have to see the positive value the positive charge whose will be more that is going to be the correct order so yes al plus 3 has more charge than ba plus 2 than na plus 2 that means statement 1 is correct here statement 1 is correct here uh, this is not the correct answer here statement 1 is correct this is not the correct one now in the second one also if we are talking about a positive sol we have to see more negative charge so if i talk in this case nacl cl negative is there in if i talk over here it is so4 two negative if i talk over here po4 minus 3 so po4 minus 3 will have more than so4 minus 2 then cl but the order is written opposite that means statement 2 is incorrect so this is again wrong statement 2 is incorrect so option number c students is going to be the correct answer option number c is going to be the correct answer for this particular question clear everybody clear everybody shall we move on to the next question <coughs> let us see the next question measuring zeta potential is useful in determining which property of the colloidal solution measuring zeta potential is useful in determining which property of the colloidal solution a viscosity b solubility c stability of the colloidal particle while d size of the colloidal particle yes students see when you are going to measure you know uh, the zeta potential then you need to see that it is going to help you in determining the stability of the colloidal particles it is going to explain you about the stability so option number c students is going to be a correct option right let us see the next question of yours the next question is on which of the following properties does the coagulating power of an ion depend on which of the following properties does the coagulating power of an ion depends a option you have the magnitude of the charge on the ion alone b size of the ion alone c both magnitude and the size of the charge on the ion while d the size of the charge on the ion alone giving you 2 minutes again to think about it very simple question students <coughs> now students according to hardy schulz rule basically the coagulating power of an ion will depend upon both magnitude and the sign of the charge okay of the ion so it will depend upon magnitude and the size of the charge on the ion so option number c students is the right answer according to hardy schulz rule now let us see the next question of ours 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज द कॉगुलेशन वैल्यूज इन मिली मोल्स पर लीटर ऑफ द इलेक्ट्रोलाइट यूज फॉर कॉगुलेशन फॉर ए एस टू एस थ्री आर गिवन बिलो एन ए सी एल वैल्यू फिफ्टी टू बी एस सी एल टू वैल्यू जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन एम जी एस ओ फोर वैल्यू जीरो पॉइंट टू टू दे आर आस्किंग द वैल्यू ऑफ कॉगुलेटिंग पावर द करेक्ट ऑर्डर ऑफ कॉगुलेटिंग पावर सो दे हैव गिवन यू फोर ऑप्शन ओवर हेयर स्टूडेंट्स यू शुड नो दैट बेसिकली कॉगुलेटिंग पावर एंड द कॉगुलेशन वैल्यू रिलेशनशिप सो सी कॉगुलेटिंग पावर कॉगुलेटिंग पावर इज इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू कॉगुलेशन वैल्यूज इट इज इनवर्सली प्रपोर्शनल टू कॉगुलेशन वैल्यूज राइट सो इफ यू सी ओवर ह्योर यू हैव बिन गिवन द वैल्यूज ऑफ कॉगुलेशन एज फिफ्टी टू जीरो पॉइंट सिक्स नाइन एंड जीरो पॉइंट टू टू so if you see over here 52 is highest so that means its coagulating power is the lowest first we'll have the lowest then if we talk about 0.69 and 0.22 again 0.69 is the highest that means it will have low and at last we have the lowest which will have the highest coagulating power so the order is going to be 3 2 1 that means ma'am option number c is going to be the correct answer for this particular question Option number C is going to be the correct answer for this particular question. Clear, everybody? Simple question. Shall we move on to the next one? <coughs> Let us see the next question. Fog is a colloidal solution of. Fog is a colloidal solution of a solid and gas b. gas in gas c liquid in gas while d gas in liquid now let me tell you students fog is a colloidal solution of aerosol of whom ma'am of aerosol that means in case of aerosol if we are talking about dispersed phase and dispersion medium over here our dispersed phase that we talk about is going to be liquid and dispersion medium is going to be gas then only it forms aerosol aerosol is formed when liquid is dissolved in gases okay so where we can say dispersed phase where dispersed phase is in liquid form and dispersion medium and dispersion medium is the gaseous one so when liquid is dissolved in gaseous it will form aerosol that is going to be an example for that is fog so that comes out to be option number c as your correct answer for this particular question clear everybody shall we move on to the next question of ours okay now comes your next question which property of colloidal solution is independent of charge on the colloidal particle now this is also very simple question a electrosmosis b tindall effect c coagulation d is electrophoresis now Now, students, let me tell you. See, if I talk about colloidal solution properties, which is independent on the charge, that is Tyndall effect. That is which Tyndall effect in which we see scattering of light, right? So, B option is independent on the charge of the colloidal particles. Hence, option number B is going to be your correct answer for this particular question. Yes, everybody. Yes, everyone. Okay, let us see the next question. The next question is. The protecting power of lyophilic colloidal salt is expressed in terms of a coagulation value, b gold number, c critical missile concentration, while d oxidation number. Here number will come. Now students, uh, let me tell you, it will only and only express in the terms of gold number. So option number b is going to be the correct answer. Very simple question, very direct question. See, they have asked in the previous year, right? Now comes your next question. Position of non-polar and polar part and vessel. Position of non-polar and polar part and vessel. A. Polar at the outer surface, but non-polar at the inner surface. B. Polar at the inner surface, non-polar at the outer surface. C. Distributed over all the surface. D. Are present in the surface only. Very simple. C. The ones that are polar will be present at the outer surface, and ones which are non-polar will be present inside. Right. 
see why i can say that why the non polarite inside because if they if they were uh, if polar were pre if polar were present inside then they will show interaction but present inside are not showing interaction with the water molecules the one that are present outside will show interaction with the water molecule with the outer surface so only polar ones can show interaction with the water molecule so polar at the outside and non polar at the inner surface so option number a is going to be correct answer for this particular question very simple one position of non polar and polar one is very simple question. right everyone this basically missile formation occurs right so when we say that hydro uh, philic head and hydrophobic tail like this okay now let us see the next one which one of the following method is commonly used method for destruction of colloid which one of the following method is the commonly used method for destruction of a colloid a dialysis b condensation c filtration by animal membrane while d is by adding electrolyte so students what do you think which of the following is going to be the correct one <coughs> right now see students uh when we talk about destruction of colloidal one if you are going to add electrolyte all the colloidal particles will settle down as a precipitate so basically this is going to be the correct option for this particular question by adding electrolyte we can see the destruction of colloids the destruction of colloids as they get separated down they get precipitated right and then the electrolytes neutralize the charge of the colloidal particles so by this way we can say this is the commonly used method now let us see the next question the next question is add the critical missile concentration that is cmc critical missile concentration the surfactant molecules a associate b dissociate c decompose d become completely soluble very simple how does a cluster form my question is ma'am how does a cluster form <coughs> see when they are going to combine together when they are going to associate then only cluster will form then only missile will form so option number a is going to be correct answer that they are going to associate association is going to takes place so at cmc critical missile concentration association occurs option number a is the correct answer next the ability of an anion to bring about coagulation of a given colloid depends on a magnitude of the charge b both magnitude and the charge c its charge only while d sign of the charge alone very simple now only we have done this question the same question in the previous one that it depends upon both magnitude and charge similar question we have done that it depends upon both magnitude and charge so option number b my dear students is going to to be correct answer for this particular question now let us see the next question of ours the next question is when a few typical solutes are separated by a particular selective membrane such as protein particles blood corpuscles this process is called when a few typical solutes are separated by a particular selective membrane selective membrane okay such as protein particle blood corpuscles this process called a transpiration b endosmosis c dialysis d diffusion so students yes this is a process of dialysis which is commonly used for this methods so this is a direct theory based question see when you are going to learn about the properties when you are going to understand about the properties of colloidal particles you are going to understand in such a way only that some of the con uh, concepts you have to understand okay that what actually occurs now let us see the next question at cmc the surfactant molecules again the same question but different options over here a is dissociate b is associate c become bigger in size due to adsorption d become smaller in size due to decomposition so at cmc the surface molecules are going to what they are going to associate what they are going to do ma'am they are going to associate so option number b is the right answer yes i will give you two three question as a homework also so we are going to see that whether you are able to solve or not right so over here they are going to associate so option number b is the correct answer let us see the next one in the given figure label the parts you have been given the figure you have to label the parts here you have been provided by a b and where they have told you that this circle basically represents coo negative right now see a is hydro now in a option a is hydrophilic tail b is hydrophobic head in b option a is hydrophobic tail b is hydrophobic head c is a is hydrophobic tail b is hydrophilic head d is a is hydrophilic tail b is hydrophilic head now see over here now uh, if i talk about b b is going to be showing a bond at with the water molecules it is polar in nature so it is hydrophilic head hydrophilic head hydrophilic head hydrophilic head if i talk about tail tail is hydrophobic tail is hydrophobic water repelling so it will be inside so option number c is going to be the correct answer option number c is going to be correct answer for this particular question
let us see the next question next question is when a colloidal solution is viewed from the direction at right angles of light beam okay you are seeing a colloidal solution at the right angles the path of the beam is illuminated due to scattering of light see in tyndall effect scattering occurs right so a and b are this is your a and this is your b very simple a and b are a they are saying is tyndall cone b is scattered light a is scattered light b is tyndall cone c a is a uh, tyndall cone they are saying b is blind spot while d is a is tyndall effect and b is tyndall cone very simple question think about it students just think about it now this is simple simplest question diagram is being provided you i am giving you this question as your homework this is your question number 1 as your homework which you can directly see from here and directly answer it so given you few minutes in order to solve it write in the comment section you have to write the answer in the comment section we are going to see on answers right that whether you are able to solve the question the most important ones or not right take a screenshot of it students done everybody done everybody yes done everyone <coughs> yes <coughs> okay one thing students this is going to be arrow is like this okay kindly correct the arrow i'll check your question a arrow should be over here just give me a minute let me confirm that a is present over here or not right kindly write the question till then <coughs> One minute, students. yes students the diagram is exactly correct one they have represented a over here in this particular region only in this complete region only so no need to worry a is present over here in between in the complete region so you can answer it accordingly this is your question number 1 as a homework right now comes your next question let us see the cause of brownian movement which is not shown by true solution or suspension is due to now this is also very simplest let us see a unbalanced bombardment of particle by molecules of the dispersion medium b attractive forces between dispersed phase and dispersion medium c larger size of particle due to which they keep colliding and settling down while d conversion currents formed in the solution now students it is very very simple answer is going to be unbalanced bombardment of particle by molecules of the dispersion medium hence option number a is going to be correct answer with regard to the brownian movement in brownian movement it is a zigzag movement in other words you can say this is your zigzag movement in other words i would say right so option number 1 is correct because there is a unbalanced bombardment of particles that occurs over here let us see the next question now the next question is which of the plots is adsorption isobar for chemis option which of the plots really sorry which of the plots is adsorption isobar for chemis option you have been given with four graphs this is your question number 2 as your homework right clear you have to just tell which of the following graph now you have to write it answer in the comment section now one more question observe the given adsorption isotherm carefully and choose the correct option a these curves indicate that a fixed temperature there is a decrease in physical adsorption with increase in pressure uh, second part they basically say this is your second this is your second this is your third and this is your fourth okay second says that these curves always seem to approach saturation at high pressure third is is generally represented by this isotherm fourth is these curves indicate that at fixed pressure there is a decrease in physical adsorption with increase in temperature so these are the statements given to you a option is first and third only b option is second and fourth only c option is second third and fourth only while d is all of these so you have to write its answer in the comment section this is your last homework question for your today and this was the last question for our segment as well so students we have now completed our chapter surface chemistry and now you all are prepared with your 
physical chemistry part because we have done each and every chapters previous year questions are the most expected ones if you have missed any of the session you can watch again go in the playlist watch it again and solve the questions don't skip any of the questions because these are really very important with regard to your examination now before ending my dear students my upcoming doctors few lines for you people okay you are born to win you are born to win and to be a winner and to be a winner you must plan to win prepare to win and execute to win so students if you are planning something if you are preparing for it then execution is really very essential you know planning only will not help you to you know uh, attain success no not at all until and unless you are you know applying that in your uh, schedule you are changing your schedule you are trying harder than the yesterday see success never comes in a day it comes from day in and day out efforts from the previous day how much you are bringing a change in the next day is really really very important and this really matters so you have to bring a little little change day by day and see automatically you're going to succeed in your life so my upcoming doctors write all the very best for your future examination and yes keep smiling keep learning thank you so much and have a good day take care